Hello and welcome everyone to the third meeting, uh, the community workshop for the Rosewood Ports Redevelopment Project. We are going to take a few moments to let folks into the meeting and then we'll get started. I'm Sharonda Robinson and I will be supporting tonight's conversation. I am really excited that you're here because we've got some really good information to share with you. So again, you'll just hang tight with us for a few more moments as we let folks um, come into the conversation, we will um, get started. And at this time, I'd like to invite Larissa Davila um, here to welcome folks in Espanol and um, we'll open up the interpretation room if there are any folks who have that need. Larissa? Larissa, you're on mute. We can't hear you. Can you hear me now? Now we can hear you. Thank you. Good evening. Welcome. I am, uh, let's see. Hola, buenas tardes. Hello, hello. Yes, we can hear you. Perfecto, perfecto. Buenas tardes a todos. Mi nombre es Larisa Dávila y soy su intérprete inglés-español, español-inglés. Voy a estar proporcionando interpretación en español para todas las personas que así lo requieran. Les pido por favor que vayan a la parte inferior de su pantalla. Van a encontrar un icono de El Mundo. Por favor, presionen el icono y escojan el idioma español. Y ahí mismo yo voy a estar traduciendo para ustedes. De todos modos, si tienen alguna pregunta, por favor, comuníquense conmigo por medio de la opción de mensajes y estaré contestando todas sus preguntas. Muchas gracias. Thank you so much. And I think that um, we will get started in just a moment. I want to make sure that we're, I see folks coming in still and want to make sure that they have an opportunity to enter into the room tonight. One of the reasons I'm super excited about tonight's conversation is because we get to show you the result of some feedback or at least how we see um, and what we've heard in terms of feedback over the course of three meetings, two, up, two previous meetings and a resident workshop that we held uh, last week. So we get to do a little bit of show and tell and continue to get your input on the, the project. So with that, I'd love to um, have the team advance the slide. And we will talk about tonight's agenda and what we're gonna be accomplishing together tonight. Uh, we're going to go over team introductions and um, give you an update on the resident community event that we held last week. We're going to talk about what we heard from you in the course of the community meetings, the two previous community meetings. And then we're going to um, go into a discussion on the community green space. And you'll have an opportunity to provide feedback and input. And then also we want to brainstorm with you for just a moment on naming ideas. So be thinking about that, get those creative juices flowing, naming ideas for the Welcome Center and also potentially the community green space. So with that, um, I'd love for each member of the team to introduce themselves and um, we will in alphabetical order as you see it on the screen. And then we will get going from there. Hi, I'm Matthew Beaton from Nelson Partners. I'm a, a project manager for the kind of the architecture of the redevelopment for, for Rosewood Courts. And we're really excited to be here on this great project. Hey, good, good evening. I'm Sylvia Blanco. I'm the chief operating officer for the Housing Authority of the City of Austin and um, have been very interested 
intimately involved in the uh, Rosewood redevelopment effort for um, going on a decade now. So thank you all for your continued interest and, and support for um, Rosewood redevelopment. Thank you for being here tonight. Hi everybody, I'm David Carroll. I'm the partner in charge for Urban Foundry Architecture and we are working on the eight uh, historic buildings for this redevelopment project. Glad to be part of the team. Good evening, uh, everybody. I'm Donna Carter with Carter Design Associates, and we are working on the green space and the Welcome Center. And, um, and they're all exciting, but also the home ownership part. So we're very excited to be part of this um, really community changing um, project and opportunity. So um, welcome, thanks. Hi everyone, I'm Anissa Shetu with Urban Foundry Architecture, um, project manager working on the historic units as David mentioned, and excited to be here as well. Hi, this is Jonathan Gary with Carlton. I'm a development associate on the team down here in Austin and uh, looking forward to hearing everyone's feedback on the designs today. Hi, I'm Will Henderson. I'm also with Carlton Companies on the development side. We're serving as the co-developer with the Housing Authority. Our construction company is also working as the contractor for the project. Uh, like Jonathan, I uh, look forward to, to hearing and seeing your comments tonight because we found the the more input we get on, on the front end, a, a better product and a better project uh, we get on the back end. So I look forward to, uh, to hearing from everybody tonight. Thank you. Hi, I'm Abby Lawson and I work with Carter Design Associates, Donna Carter, and we're working on the, the park and the visitor center and the home ownership. So really enjoy this project and um, welcome. All right, and thank you everyone on the project team. And I also wanna introduce a couple of folks that are behind the scenes that you probably won't see um, that are on the team as well, Ra Shakir, as well as Naya Antar, and then Larissa Davila, who you heard earlier, who's helping with Spanish interpretation. Thank you all for supporting tonight's conversation. So when we um, embarked on this work, Sylvia mentioned that it's been about a decade that she has been working with Haka and Haka has been working to bring this project to fruition, the development of Rosewood Courts. Um, in this phase that we're in now, um, just wanted to remind you that this is our third community workshop and we held a community workshop in April. Uh, where we introduced the project in this phase and did an overview and had a robust conversation about the history of the project. In our second meeting, which was held in May, we um, delved into the visitor center space and the green space. And tonight we're gonna be bringing back to you what we heard um, in our third meeting. So for today's discussion, um, I just mentioned this, that you know, we're gonna be talking about potential naming. We want you to put your thinking caps on and get creative and help us think about how we might rename some spaces that uh, are being created through the, the redevelopment. And um, we welcome your input. There will be plenty of opportunities for you to give us feedback during tonight's conversation. This, these workshops are part of the, um, and help inform the section 106 process. Um, and we wanna talk about next steps after this meeting. Even though this is our final community workshop of this phase, there are uh, future steps that we wanna make sure that you're aware of. So with this, I'll turn it over to Sylvia Blanco, who has again been supporting the work to move the redevelopment of Rosewood Courts into fruition. The time is now to share, share with us uh, the mission of Haka. Thank you, Sharonda. 
Uh, yes, yeah, so a little bit about uh, the Housing Authority of the City of Austin, or HACA for short. We serve um, over 20,000 people on a daily basis uh, who are uh, in need of housing assistance through either our uh, properties, and we have 18 properties throughout Austin, or through the uh, Housing Choice Voucher Program, also uh, formerly known as the, uh, the Section 8 Program. And we have been around since 1937. Uh, we were created through the U.S. Housing Act of 1937. And um, essentially our mission is to uh, cultivate sustainable, affordable housing communities and partnerships. Um, and what I want to emphasize is uh, the partnerships piece. Uh, while we do provide a very critical safety net of uh, deeply affordable housing for many families in need, uh, we know that that's just you know one one step in um, being able to be self-sufficient. It also means um, being connected to educational opportunities and uh, job training, health and wellness, um, and transportation needs. So we really do work in partnership with many many organizations and entities here in the Austin area. And so everything we do, we do in partnership. And much like today's um, event and, and project. We're doing this in partnership with many great um, entities and, and organizations here in the Austin area. Um, for example, Carlton Companies, Nelson Partners, uh, Adiza Communications, and uh, several other nonprofit partners. And so we're really excited about sort of the next chapter for Rosewood Courts. And um, thank you for spending your evening with us tonight to learn more and also just to kind of brainstorm sort of next steps for, for Rosewood Courts. So um, that's a little bit about HACA and what we do. And again, um, thank you for, for spending your, your evening with us. Thank you. Thank you, Sylvia. And thank you for all of your work over the last several years and the work of everyone on uh, team Haka, the residents, um, the leadership team to get us to this point. Um, tonight, we're going to want to hear from you again about um, how you see potential naming and also uh, your feedback on the design concepts that Donna Carter from Carter Design will share. Uh, we want to uh, start engaging with you if you are willing to through the use of the tool minty.com. And so you'll see on your screen in just a moment um, that we'll invite you to um, go to a, a web browser and enter menti.com and then the code 47421228. If one of my team members will put that in the chat for me, I would greatly appreciate that. Um, but um, we want to begin to poll and see who's here with us this evening and um, get some feedback from you on some of the questions that we have. So go to menti.com and um, enter the code. If you'll, the code is 47 42 12 28, and you can follow along uh, on the meeting uh, tonight. There are icons at the bottom of the screen. You see the little heart and the question mark. Go ahead and tap on those if you like what we're saying and um, if, or if you have a question about what we're talking about. Um, you can also feel free to speak up during the meeting. Um, you can raise your hand by using the reaction buttons down at the bottom or get my attention just by waving your hand. Um, I'll call on you and you feel free to use the chat feature as well. You don't have to use uh, Mintometer um, to give us feedback tonight. You can put information in the chat and those good folks that I mentioned, Ra and Naya uh, are helping me monitor tonight's chat. So let's practice. All right, and so I wanna make sure that everyone is seeing the screen. Um, so, so if we could make sure that the screen is showing. Um, and we'd love for you to tell us about yourself. Um, if you can go ahead and make sure the screen is showing. Um, tell us about yourself. There are a couple of categories that you can pull from. And choose. And I see folks are doing that. All right. 
got a couple of community members. And then thank you. We will give you about 30 more seconds to fill in. So we've got a good cross section of folks. Uh, thank you to our Haka resident who's shown up tonight. I'm excited to share the details about that hot evening that we were um, out at Rosewood Courts um, talking to our residents. All right. So got a good number of responses. We'll go to the next slide. Thank you for joining us tonight. All right, you guys have moved ahead. Um, we want to make sure that voting stays open for everyone. So how long have you lived in Austin? Looks like we've got a good mix. And welcome to the person who indicated they don't live in Austin. Welcome. We're glad you're here tonight. Next slide. Race and ethnicity. Just a good way for us to see who's here. Make sure we are responsive. And the next slide. Your age range. You guys are fast. <laughs> All right, we've got some millennials in the building. Thanks for joining, or one. We would love to be able to be together in person. And so we're really grateful um, that you are participating with us. If you're just joining, I'm Sharonda Robinson and I'm part of the project team. Welcome to our third community workshop on Rosewood Courts. Um, would invite you to um, join us on minty.com. You'll see um, if someone will place that in the chat again as well for the new folks that have come into tonight's conversation, you want to go to www.menti.com and enter the code. Menti is spelled M E N T I.com. Enter the code 47421228 and you will be able to participate in tonight's conversation. You can also raise your hand by hitting the reaction button or leaving comments or questions in the chat. Um, we really do want to hear from you. All right, and which zip code? You guys are already putting in the information. We've got 02 represented, 3004 East Austin, 59, so 78665. Is that Pflugerville? I think that's Pflugerville. Round Rock. Round Rock, Round Rock, okay. Uh, Round Rock, thank you. All right, and next slide. All right, so I mentioned that um, last week we um, were able to spend some time with residents. We really wanted to create an opportunity where our residents had access to the information. I see a heart going, thank you for that, to the information about the project and that we were listening to them about um, the design, the ideas, uh, the flow, all the things we've been talking about in our community workshops here on Zoom. So we were live and in person, I think it was like 99 degrees out. Um, and we um, also had raffle prizes, there was a DJ, free vaccination um, and food for our residents. And we really wanted to create this opportunity for people to tell us their thoughts and give us their feedback. The project team participated fully in what we called the get together at Rosewood Courts. And there were stations set up around the property at different locations around the property where folks were asked to give feedback on interior design options. 
um, what the interior spaces may look like in terms of color palette and materials, and also how they saw the community green space being used as well as Welcome Center activities. And so here are some images of what we experienced together um, at, um, at the get together at Rosewood Courts. Um, and we'll share the feedback that we received as well. So now I wanna go into what we heard. And I promise you, I'm not gonna do all the talking tonight. You're gonna to hear from Donna Carter with Carter Design, who's gonna share um, re the, some of the concepts based on the feedback. And so just to recap quickly, for those of you who this may be your first meeting, our first uh, community meeting, community workshop was in April, as I mentioned before. And we had a deep conversation around the history of Rosewood Courts and what it meant to um, the people that were on the call um, and Emancipation Park and the complexities of Emancipation Park and how the space was used as celebration, how it was used as reunion space. And so we were able to gather that information and, and what it does is it helps us think about how we design the green space and how we design the Welcome Center. We know that Rosewood Courts has a rich history in our community. And that's what we heard from the community members that were there. Um, in our second community meeting, um, we talked specifically about the green space in terms of what kinds of offerings may, um, we may be able to have um, at the green space. Um, and there was a particular interest in connecting, having making sure that Haka connected with organizations such as Six Square and the Carver Museum um, to create this really rich cultural interactive experience. We have, we have a really wonderful opportunity to do that here. Um, so we talked about short-term exhibits that showcased artwork um, and potentially a permanent, permanent display because one of the things that was really important to some of the folks in the first meeting as well as the second meeting is that we were leaving a legacy that people um, under, would understand why this site is so important to the community, not only in the past, but also in the future. And then during our um, Rosewood Courts resident, our get together, our outdoor meeting, um, we collected notes. We were, we were really excited about this because uh, to date we've done all of our meetings uh, via Zoom. And so to be able to, to get um, out and actually see people in person was really fun for us and pull out the sticky notes and markers and, and gather feedback. Um, but you'll, you see here these um, conversations, we have the board set up. This is the same information that was shared um, at the, um, in the second meeting, in the Zoom meeting. We brought that to our residents um, to give them an opportunity for feedback and, and um, also got a lot of great feedback from the kids that were there. Um, and again, a lot of parallels in terms of the feedback we heard in meeting one, in meeting two, and what the residents also expressed as well in terms of making sure that the history of the site, how it came to be, the space, the community that Rosewood Courts represents that we are able to tell that story. And so they talked about art displays. There was also an emphasis on making sure that there were strong connection points. This is a community, a neighborhood um, between residents um, and places, gathering spaces and places uh, for people to connect with their neighbors. So with that, I'll, I will just check in and see if I missed anything. Uh, we really wanted to want to make sure that this is a two-way conversation in terms of what we heard and if there's anything that we missed um, that you feel like we didn't capture uh, in what we heard. If you wanna put that in the chat or just raise your hand quickly. For anyone that's here that attended either the resident um, get together or the community meeting. Steve, I see you, I see you're, you, you talking. Are you, you wanna unmute? Okay, I'm asking. I'm sorry, you. I lasted. 
lost the last part because all of a sudden someone started messaging me about another Zoom meeting that I'm not going to, but still. <laughs> Well, okay. Well, we, um, I was just asking if we missed anything. We just gave a recap and Lenita um, Robinson, I see your hand up. Thank you for raising it. Um, if there was anything we missed in terms of the recap of what we heard, we want to make sure that we've got good data and that we have two-way conversation. I think we covered everything. Okay. Lenita, I'm going to ask you to unmute. Um, okay, I, look, I'm still trying to figure out the thing. Um, so we were down there June, Juneteenth, um, me and my mother, and I know I told the, one of the few meetings my grandmother and mother were raised over there. So she was taking her on her walk in her memory lane. But um, so the one thing I might want to put out there just in the design process that I noticed, um, because Juneteenth is a very big deal for us to be able to come to Rosewood and still be able to have our spots where our family had gathered, you know, talking about the future. And I'm just thinking on that Rosewood side where the parade comes down, um, not because I haven't seen the whole thing, the whole visual, but that space having some kind of shaded seating area specifically on that corner so that um, every Juneteenth, there's a guaranteed gathering shade spot where the parade is. I know to some it may not even be a big deal or thought, but that is like the longest historical continuance um, that I know of, of, of my family. And, and I know that that's something that should be considered because as they build up over there, the access to be able to access the parade will be less and less. So um, if anything to add, it's just that uh, idea um, to consider. Thank you, mm -hmm. Lenita. Um, yeah, the parade was, it's always hot in June in Texas, right? <laughs> so to have, yes. a, to have a shaded spot <laughs> is important. Thank you for that. And Donna, yes. Donna Carter with Carter Design is going to talk about that corner in particular. Um, we've had some internal conversations about that um, as well. All right, anyone else before we move on to uh, really the, the central focus of tonight's conversation, which is to share with you the concepts um, based on what we heard um, about the green space and the Welcome Center. Last call. I don't see anybody waving their hand. I'm gonna check the chat. Uh, Sylvia said, love that idea, Lenita. Thank you. All right, Donna, I think you are up next. We'll turn it over to you. Um, and we're gonna be asking some questions after this uh, brief presentation because we wanna get your feedback as well. Good evening, everybody. Um, and yes, I, I love that comment and it really feeds right into to where we're going. Next slide, please. This is just a kind of reminder. These are the, it's kind of the, where we started with the green space. And I wanna make sure, I may be drawing on the screen. So I wanna make sure Naya that you've given me permission to, to write on your screen if I need to, or at least get a mouse pointer that people can see. So this is, this is Rosewood. Uh, obviously this is Chacon and, and, and we are focused on this corner. And the arrows that we're drawing, we, we sort of, we see we want to draw people in. We want to draw people into this public space, to the welcome center. Um, but we also want to realize that people are living here. So have some separation so that people um, have, have private places to, to be. So we really see a lot of this activity going um, and, and provide safe way to cross the site here, to get to bus stops, to get to other places within the community. Uh, the, the, the terrain, we, we all know it has a lot of trees. It also has a lot of change in elevation. You have to walk up a lot of steps to get where you're going. But that means we also have places, if you stand in this place, you can look up and you actually see up into what will become the preservation units. 
So we just wanted to be kind of aware of all of these elements on the site and take those into consideration as we worked through um, the ideas that, um, that, that you've given us uh, to start to actually design this space. Next slide. And what we started to hear, and, and the great thing for me, it, for, through the three meetings, um, with the community meetings and then our, our resident Rosewood get together, was really an alignment of the kinds of activities that, uh, that people wanted. Um, clearly, this open space, um, kind of in the middle, there, there, there was a need for open space, both for kids to just kind of a place to run, but a place to have exercise classes, a place to get together with other people, both resident community, but also then start to host these for people within the community. One of the things that I'm sort of talking about would be um, Rosewood Connect, that really Rosewood is connected. It, it is a, a wonderful community of itself, but it is really connected and is really the heart of a much larger community. So when we look at these activities um, and things are happening here, so that's always interesting. Uh, I would, Donna, just to jump in, I would ask mm -hmm. my team to hit S to show the image so that everyone sees what you're talking about. Okay. Yes, there we go. Perfect. All right. All right. And so, uh, so it's really that open activity, and and um, yeah, yes, yeah, so we're going to want to continue to hear in, to get input about how important that is. We got a lot of feedback to have small, you know, small places for people to get together with their friends, small gaming tables, place to play checkers, chess, forty two. Um, and then places that you could have people gather with larger groups, both on a spur of the moment basis, but also uh, on you know, reserve. Let's get a family reunion, a place to meet, a place to reconnect. But one of the things that we've done with this space, you'll see now, you talked about shade, we have some very large heritage trees on the property. And we have taken um, some of these trees will have to be relocated. And we feel that the open space, it's a good place to, to put those because they're large, they're mature, they offer a lot of coverage. We've also, if you notice, we've taken that free right-hand turn and we've kind of um, stolen it back from the city and says it needs to be part of the park. It needs to be part of this green space. And we're pushing the, large, the largest tree that we have as close to that corner as possible, realizing that this could either be a starting point or an ending point for the Juneteenth parade. And as we've been working on this project, just the excitement of it becoming a national holiday and just all of those things just seems to reinforce the importance of being able to really have that clarion call at this point, at this location. So those are kinds of our thoughts. We're going to push that tree as close to the corner, provide as much sh shade, but still allow people to walk into that space. You'll notice here, we also want to change the pavement so that you're walking and coming into this space um, really as a, as a welcome to make sure people know there's something special, just even as they're just walking along the sidewalk. Next, next slide, please. But we also need, we need furnishings. We need places for people to be. And as we talked, one of the things was having some choice. So chairs that, um, not so much that they could be moved, but there were individual, you could sit there by yourself and be perfectly comfortable with them, but also feel, feel safe. So they're gonna be, visible, they're going to be where people are going to be. But because of the terrain changes, we have areas where we're going to have to build in walls and build in steps. And there was a fair amount of conversation. It's nice to know exactly where the seating is going to be. It's nice to have some areas where you can actually get a group together, but informally. 
And so to really have those built-in seating opportunities. And as I said before, the built-in opportunities for the, the, the family, the reunion, the group get together. We, we have, as we travel through the site, we still have different things going on. This is actually uh, the resident um, community gathering place. So that could be, again, some long tables as well as smaller tables, built-in seating. All of that opportunity can happen in this area. And it can happen facing out into the green space, um, but also could be reserved by the community you know, completely by itself. Here we do, um, we have perhaps not a manicured lawn, but what we, we get is a, almost a garden effect. And again, have it, stepping stones, ways to get in and really sit in a garden, in a green space setting. But also some long areas where if we wanna set up a, um, a, a, a screen and have movies in the park, um, set up a area that can act as a DJ area. We can do that here. We can also do it in an upper platform with a shield so that it doesn't disturb the, um, the residents at that side. So we're, we want to create um, several different types of opportunities um, for, uh, for to, to enjoy this space. We also want to very much emphasize and, um, the, the fact that we will be walking through and that there's a safe pedestrian activity. Next slide. So that we want to emphasize the uh, really a safe pedestrian um, uh, shaded, different shade opportunities, but also to make sure that traffic is slowed down as they go into the parking area, that they know they're entering into a pedestrian zone, provide a wider accessible route to, to not only the preservation units, but the rest of the, the complex so that you don't have to walk upstairs. You can actually take a ramp anywhere you want, but that also, again, opportunities for seating so that there are places to rest, tables that can be used, barbecue grills that, that, that can be used as well. These are trees that are existing, they will remain and um, really enjoy in a very relatively small space, several different um, open space public feeling um, experiences. One of the things we will want to provide for is to make sure activities can happen in these spaces. Uh, we, we heard that stories wanted to be told, that shade was necessary. So we think we have natural shade, um, but we also have the opportunity here to have um, structures that whether they house plaques or actually have recordings in them that people can hear a story. So I think we have several opportunities that don't have to be there from day one, but we can provide for them by, for, by providing utilities, electricity, so that things can be added so that the story can continue to be so, uh, told. This is a project that really is a background for residents, um, for the community to continue to add on to, to build, to change, to mold, um, that's, that's yours. Um, it's ours as a community, but it is something that um, can continue to grow and evolve over time. Next slide, please. And telling the story is where we get, um, we have lots of options, but again, it was really, I mean, the having um, story boards that were visible, this image number A, 
um, has repeatedly gotten, you know, the highest, <laughs> highest ranks. I don't know what's going to happen tonight, but it's re repeatedly been, we want to see this all through the site and will be a graphic a little later on to, um, to show how that can be done. But it's very clear we're going to have to have a way of having a permanent exhibit of stories, not only stories about Austin, stories about Rosewood residents, stories about people that have come from Rosewood, um, and, and stories of people that live outside of the community but affected it greatly. Uh, we have, we know that we have the ability to get um, actual, you know, to get state, national, um, and local recognition. These are formal plaques that will tell stories that are going to not only be written on site, but are part of our, our, our collected and communal archive. And um, we know that we will get one, or we don't know, nothing's ever certain, but we are, would certainly argue very strongly to have one to commemorate the first, uh, the location of Emancipation Park. We, as a local historic um, properties, the preservation units should have a, a recognizable plaque that tells that it is a registered, um, these are registered Austin properties. And then um, the story of the site of Rosewood Courts itself, the entire site, of the original buildings would also warrant what would be called a site marker. And those are formal, formal placards and we would suggest places for those to be put. But they're also informal uh, play, uh, stories that can be told. And those also have their location and uh, stories that, and, and places that they can be put on site. So we feel sort of layering these both, and it's not so much of importance, but it's it's in reach. Layering that is very important, and um, hopefully it just becomes part of the DNA of the community. Next slide, please. I think it's also, and as we tell the story, there, there are many other ways. We have opportunities um, to, to name our streets. The city um, actually now has a program where historic districts get a, a street name topper sign that tells about that area. Um, even though we're not a district, I think they're, uh, again, having that topper sign to really set this area apart is something that, that should be looked into and is certainly a possibility. As I said before, the formal signs and you know, this being the preservation units, um, the uh, site itself, and the original Emancipation Park. The red lines here are an idea of literally marking, um, whether with bricks, small metal tokens, or something um, more elaborate like C, um, sort of the outline at least the ones that would be exposed of where the original park was so that people would visibly be able to tell where this was, why this area is important. Um, and you know, we, we want to hear whether that resonates with, with, with anyone or not. Um, I come from a tradition where you know, we had footprints in the in the path and we walked different footprints to to tell the story of revolutionary war so um but it, it is something that is very visible um even though we've lost that resource um in its original state next slide and last but certainly not least is the welcome center and this to me is kind of our little um, little jewel with a, with a big heart that is showing that we are the heart of a much larger community and really wanting to, to welcome people, uh, show people what that is. We overwhelmingly, the idea of telling and hearing stories, hearing 
um, hearing people talk about their lives, about something that's important to them, hearing that seemed to be very important. And so the idea of, again, the tree, almost as metaphor, but a place where some of these stories could literally be repository, but that image seemed to resonate across all of the meetings. Having a place where there could be performances, uh, where, and, and that's something that's lively, but that's also something that is very future looking because we don't know really even the, what performances are gonna look like in the future, but it, it's, it's that sharing and that artistic um, uh, endeavor that's changing and that's ever muting. And of course, just per some permanent exhibit space. And really what we want to do with a very small space is to allow that to happen or to, that space to be flexible enough to have all three of those things happen. We also realize that there can be performances outside and we wanna make sure that we've got accommodations for that. We have protections acoustically from our re for our residents, but have an area where some of these activities can happen outside. In the permanent exhibit space, yes, some things need to be sheltered, but we also have um, the opportunity to have artwork in other areas of, um, of the site, and we would hope to bring some of that outside. The, um, in terms of performance, um, we also, we do have this higher area that would at least allow a platform or a place for stage uh, to be set up um, it w with some challenges in terms of noise and perhaps visibility, but um, it, it might offer some options as well. Next slide. Um, so right now, these are, it, it's the idea of, we want to welcome people in. We wanna make sure that, that, that the path is something very different. People know they're passing a uh, special place. These are existing trees, they're, they're tall, they provide shade, they've, they've already been built up against or they've grown up against buildings. So their shade is one sort of one-sided, which would put the shade more towards the, the, the west side, which is good because that's that sun. We wanna open up the bottom as much as possible so that when those doors are open, that this can, if we need to have an event that crosses that path, it can. Um, but, and this little piece here is what um, we would call, or what I call kind of Rosewood Connect. It's an area that hopefully will have announcements about what's going on at the Carver, what's going on Six Square. It would be a place if there's a changing exhibit inside, uh, something could be put there to, to entice people, but it is, it's information, it's something that's visual, that people can see things happening. Uh, it is everyone's connection to both in and out. It's a, it's a two-way thing. So we are um, very much wanting to, to, to work to make that something that's very visual um, and, uh, and, and hopefully inviting. Um, I've spoken a lot, I'm losing my voice. So I um, hope that we can have some conversations about any and all of the ideas that we have uh, talked about or that I've talked about this evening. Thank you, Donna. And we actually do have a comment in um, the chat from Justin Stewart, who says shade areas look great. Um, I really like the commitment to push a tree towards Rosewood and Chacon Street. Would that be a transplanted tree? Yes, Which, it is. The temporary, the temporary permanent story is so wonderful. The demarcation of the history park is unbelievably clever, bravo team. So there's a question about a transplanted tree. Uh, yes, the tree is a transplanted tree. It's actually one of the largest ones that we have, which also means we 
we have to give it you know, we have to work within its 50 foot critical root zone or the 50% critical root zone. Um, but, and we are putting it into what, you know, is city of Austin right of way and it's their tree and they won't be able to take it away. So. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you for that question, Justin, as well as those comments. Um, what kind of tree? Ooh, I'm not the landscape architect and I don't have that drawing up. <laughs> up and so I don't know a lot of the trees that have um I really I'm not going to say because I really don't okay. know okay maybe we can try to find that out and yes. get that information in um in an FAQ on the project website so at this time Donna I would love to open it up to see if there are any other questions and comments about all of the different concepts that you shared tonight and maybe we can kind of flip back through the deck um, and give people an opportunity to revisit what we talked about. Um, Steve is weighing in on what kind of tree he's saying, wouldn't it be some of the heritage oaks already on the property? So um, we've got some, definitely got some interest. Right, and I will try to find that. If you see me looking on, it's I'm looking at another screen to look it up. Okay. Um, there are a lot of pecans on the site and there are heritage oaks and I just do not know which one of that one, which tree that is designated as. I'm trying to look it up too, so. Okay, okay. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Matt. So can we flip back through um, the, the start of this and Lenita, I see you have your hand up so we'll come to you. Just a moment. And what we want people to um, go back, go to activities, thank you, um, to be able to do, I hope people can still um, weigh in. That was what was happening, Donna. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> you all just like to, to make I me have to, have to work. <laughs> I know, I know. So um, it's important to us to, um, get some insight from you in terms of the kind of uh, activities you'd like to see. Um, and we're asking you to kind of rank your preferences. So if you'll go to menti.com and www.menti.com and then enter 4742-1228, that's the code. And if someone from my team will put it in the chat, then, um, or you can put it in um, the chat as well uh, you know, in order, A, B, or C, in terms of the activities, uh, and what, what you'd really like to see happening on the site uh, in terms of activities. Any preferences? And then, Lanita, go ahead and ask your question as we're doing that. Ooh. Okay. Um, so my question on the heritage part in the... Um, the, the putting the history um where would the those community members that actually have photos uh living there um submit for curation when it comes to deciding what we're going to memorialize love that question. and what type of outreach are we doing for that yeah, I love that question. I think Donna has an answer and Sylvia may be able to, to jump in. And we specifically asked some folks from the Carver Museum and also Six Square to join us uh, this evening as well, because that idea has been floating around. Donna and then Sylvia. Right, and I, I don't have the answer, Sharonda. I, I, I wish I did, then that I would, you know, we could all go home. Um, I think there are several ways, several ways to do it. Um, for me, I sort of go back to a very basic, it's almost like story core. I mean, the first thing is, you know, let's record some of these stories from people, um, especially those who are older b before those stories are lost. There is always the issue, and I say this as a preservation architect, is there's always the issue that we don't have photos of things. We don't have photos of people. We don't, we, and, and it is especially um, profound within the African American community that um, those photos have been lost or the the annotations on them, you know, have not been kept. And so 
my, you know, my personal feeling and it's going to run, um, there always has to be someone to collect it is that you, that the things that you are willing to either have scanned or to actually donate, you put it, put in a box, put in a folder and we then either through some place like Six Square or quite frankly, we can actually do it through the archives at Carver because it is an archival um, institution, um, start to collect those. Donna? Yes? This is Sandra Winston, the property manager at Rosewood. Um, a few years back, um, our family self-sufficiency specialist, Ms. Andrea um, Smith, she actually located a lot of pictures from Rosewood from back in, I, it looked as though they were back in the early 40s throughout the duration of, you know, when people were keeping those archives, as you mentioned, and I believe they're at Central now. There okay. was a box full of pictures, and we actually thought that would be a good idea to put in one of those, those welcoming centers, or, you know, one of those eight center, the eight buildings that we're going mm -hmm. to preserve. Mm -hmm. It was like, well, maybe one of those, we could put it in there on display, but I don't know where they are now, but we did get them and took, and they were, I think they were given to Beth maybe when she was our media specialist, but they, we have plenty of those. And I think that would be a good idea. Right. And, and the real, the real issue at some point for those, and if you say they're central and that central um, for the housing authority um, is kind of getting into the weeds is you want to make sure that they're protected. They're in a, you know, they're, they're properly stored and perhaps go through them with also, uh, with, you know, city of Austin, so that if they need to be at the archival repository, that those two are uh, taken care of um, so that they can, you know, they'll, they'll last forever. We can make reproductions, we can etch them. There are lots of things that we can physically do with those so that we can share them for people to look at and enjoy. Um, so, um, I mean, that's number one. Um, you know, when people go through their own things, sometimes they don't think what they have is important. Um, you actually need, with the work of, or with the help of historians, oral historians, um, appraisers, you have a mini um, kind of, uh, you know, traveling, you know, what is it, antique roadshow. You start looking through those because that is how we discover a lot of our history. So I think part of this is working with partners and it's going to be people, it's going to be HTU, it's going to be UT, it is going to be the libraries. Work with them. What is the best way to start collecting these things? What is the best way? Um, and, and, and we started a little bit with the, the photography uh, and the stories that were collected um, you know, through the Historic Preservation Office in Austin when they um, started looking through the College Heights for that uh, National Register District. So um, I think we all need to be thinking about it. I think there are a lot of exciting things that we can do. And I think there's gonna be a lot of exciting ways um, both simple and technological, you know, QR codes, you know, all kinds of things about walking through this community. Thank you, Donna. Sylvia, do you want to add anything to the idea around how we collect those artifacts and what the process might be? Sure. Thank you, Shonda. Um, well, and, and to Donna's point, while we haven't quite fleshed out what that's going to look like and in terms of um, the, the Rosewood Welcome Center and, and, and the, uh, the green space and any exhibits that we would like to, to share. Um, to, to Sandra's point, we did have a little bit of a head start when we uh, had an anniversary celebration. I wanna say it was for our 75th anniversary. So several years back, about five years ago or so, we did have um, a, a great, project where we um, created canvas prints from some of these historical photos that we've collected from over the years at um, several of our properties, including Rosewood Courts. So we, we do have a nice, um, I guess, a, a starting collection of some of these historical photos, but by no means um, is, is that 
you know, the, the be all end all. We, we definitely do want to um, explore enlisting the, uh, the assistance of our great academic institutions like Houston Tillotson and uh, maybe St. Edwards, ACC, UT, you name it. And also, of course, Carver Museum, as well as Six Square, um, pretty much any, any organization that uh, would love to, to assist here. Uh, we, we want this to be a collective effort uh, uh, amongst the, the community. And so in terms of how we're going to go about, you know, requesting any, um, any, any historical photos or artifacts that you know, folks in the in the general community may have and would be willing to, to share. I think that will be something that will kind of um, get the guidance of um, some of hopefully some of our partners that will be on board for this research project. And uh, we will definitely reach out to everyone in the community and see if they would like to also participate in in um, offering up some of those artifacts and, and historical photos. Again, we don't necessarily want to, you know, keep your originals uh, to Donna's point. There's a way to do that, to, to archive it and have it be um, safely, safely stored. Um, and then I guess we can um, give the originals back. Uh, but Donna, you can correct me if I'm wrong on, on that point. But uh, I think there are some existing opportunities here and we just need to kind of flesh them out a little bit further with um, several of our, of our great community partners like, like Carver and Six Square and, and HT and others. No, Sylvia, that's correct. Actually, you know, every option is available. We don't have, you know, we haven't done and laid out all the steps. Some people like to actually donate something physically but others want to keep it, but are willing to share. And both ways are equally um, important and both ways are equally as valuable, um, you know, going forward and for the community and as a resource. All right, thank you to both of you. And for those of you who aren't able to see the chat, we got a question, an answer about the type of tree that may be relocated. Um, from Matt, who is helping to lead the design on the project. He's saying that we're re relocating at least two heritage trees, both post oaks. And then uh, Lenita, thank you for weighing in pecan tree. Um, so we're gonna try to move through this piece. It, it looks like everyone has had an opportunity to um, weigh in here in terms of uh, giving us your feedback on the types of furnishings. Can you, can someone on the team hit S so we can see how many people have go back? All right. Um, so it looks like um, A again, Donna, is that the one you were talking <laughs> about earlier is the one that people <laughs> like and hit S again so we can look and see what that one mm -hmm. is. Yep. Yep. <laughs> yep. Communal seating it looks like. Yeah, yeah everybody likes it. Next, next slide, please. Right now, this is on walking path, so we'll give folks an opportunity to um, weigh in on the walking paths and mm -hmm. what yep. could be happening there. And and B often was that feels people liked, so yeah, that's yeah, in a covered area, nice green space, um, mm -hmm. nice and and kind of gentle, kind of you know. Um, receding more yes. more in the nature so and, and we will definitely so what that helps us do it helps us with um you know just trying to the style of things that we start to put in the spaces we'll try to follow these leads about what people liked because we want it's it's i get to to go someplace else and you know like something else this is you know your home so, all right, telling our story. So this is really exciting for us because we have multiple opportunities and ways to tell the story, um, both like the official um, marker, um, the historic marker on the site, and then these other um, interpretive markers that uh, help us 
tell our story. So let's look at hit S and let's look at and see what where people are. Oh, almost neck and neck between A and B. Thank you. All right, next slide, please. Telling our story. So we're going to talk about this a little bit in terms of the naming piece. Um, and because streets are in play, it sounds like we may have an opportunity to um, potentially do some uh, renaming of streets. That's a whole nother process. But um, we want to make sure that um, the ideas um, that we're sharing here that you get a chance to weigh in on. So ways to tell our story um, in ground, um, on street signs. Let's look at the, the ranking there. And Tiffany asked, do the results include the resident feedback? If not, will we be able to see that feedback as well? <laughs> Tiffany, that's a, that's a great question. So what we're going to be doing at the end of this conversation is compiling all the results into a summary. And that summary will be shared on the project website. Sharonda, will um, this or something similar to this actually be put on the website so that we can actually get more voting and continued voting on some of these issues? Yeah, that's definitely an option for the project. We can certainly do that. Um, okay. It would be a different presentation that we would put up right. for that purpose, but absolutely. We always love to ensure that we're getting more feedback from our community. All right, next slide. And again, be thinking about um, naming because that's coming up next. So this is Welcome Center and um, activities um, in the Welcome Centers, how the space is being used. Um, so let's look and see what we have there, A, B, and C. Okay. We really do appreciate your feedback on this next slide. And then uh, we talked about the Welcome Center. Any other comments or questions before we go into uh, brainstorming? So I want you to get your energy up, get excited about this, um, be thinking about uh, all the good ideas. Um, but before we leave, the great presentation that Donna Carter just provided us on the Welcome Center and the green space, any, any other thoughts or questions? from anyone, I can't see you. So you might have to yell out or uh, raise your hand. Hi, hi, this is Justin Stewart. I just okay. wanted to say that, say that, um, that uh, I messed up in my text there. I was saying that the demarcation of the historic park is just so uh, beautiful. And I, I just think it really seizes the moment in an effort to try and tell kind of the true story of kind of what's currently going on. And so um, I just wanted to kind of clarify my comment with saying that the, the, the demarcation of the historic park and where that was on site just seems so important in our effort to be transparent. And um, yeah, so with that, I uh, just wanted to clarify that. So, okay. so thank you. Thank you for that. Thank you for that clarification. We. We appreciate that. All right, so are we ready? Yes, I'll take silence as a yes. So in terms of, <laughs> of input on naming, I just really wanna open up the conversation. Um, if you think about this space, um, actually, if we could put, on, put our imagination um, caps on and we can think into the future that um, now this space is here and we have green space, community green space, we have a welcome center, um, we've got people coming in and out um, of the welcome center, you know, and coming in and using the green space residents as well as community members. Um, you know, if you would put in the chat any ideas that you have for potential names um, or considerations that the team uh, should be thinking about. Now, we're not saying tonight that we're going to rename uh, any spaces um, in particular. We are really wanting to generate some ideas for the project team to think about as we are continuing to build the project. Does that make sense to everyone? 
So we're asking you, we're kind of crowdsourcing a little bit and asking you uh, to help us think about it. Um, so it could be actual names or it could be categories. Um, say, for example, um, we want to highlight uh, important residents who made an impact in the broader community um, as part of um, a, a renaming or naming exercise. All right. So we'll give you just a few moments to think into that. And then um, we'll ask you to put comments in the chat or to raise your hand. Any questions about what we're, we're asking you to do? All right. Steve, you have a question? Yes. Um, I'm assuming Rosewood, that name stayed. Oh, we're, yeah. We're oh, talking about, okay, so we're question. talking about the names for the green spaces. Yeah, that the, <laughs> yeah. Yes, absolutely. Thank you for helping me get crystal clear on that. Absolutely. We're talking about the, the green space and the Welcome Center and potentially streets um, as part of the redevelopment. See, work too hard on the rosewood part to see that go away. <laughs> Absolutely. And I think we have a slide for people to put their um, comments in Minty as well. Sharonda. All right. Keep going. Yes, yes, go ahead. Okay. Um, okay, so on the renaming, what I have experienced is a lot of times the local heroes tend to be um, uh, overlooked because from my experience, just what I've known of what my ancestors have told me, there are a lot of heroes in East Austin that do not get the recognition because, um, like you say, we typically did not keep our documentation, our pictures. Um, some of us didn't listen to our grandparents when they were telling the stories. So what I'm trying to, I guess that's where my question is when it comes back to the research and the name is, how are we going to go about that to where um, it has the greatest impact? Um, what, what are we going to gather to make that decision? Because I'm, I'm just, I'm at a space where it should be the residents of East Austin, whatever we're speaking of naming, um, because they were the service um, population for the city of Austin. Um, and they served Austin well. And we all know if you stand at 35 and look left and look right, there's a stark contrast. So I think um, just out of that concept, when you talk about the historical aspects of Austin, that we need to be very cognizant in reaching and grabbing our local heroes and bringing them to the forefront. Right, and I appreciate that. And I think that's part of what um, is really helpful about this discussion, Lenita, is that the way that I hear that is like, what, is, what would be the criteria that mm -hmm. use for naming? Um, and so that's something that the project team can think about as we're going into this. And do we, do we prioritize residents as part of this process or people who um, are um, unsung or unknown in that, in that, in, in that space. Um, we heard Donna earlier talk about oral history and capturing that oral history. And so there is um, a desire for the project team to work with a group um, whether that be um, a cultural organization or whether that be an academic institution or maybe them partnering to help us do some of that research so that we can identify and bring forward um, who those folks are that have not been documented. We know as African-Americans, our history is documented very differently or not documented at all um, as robustly as other groups. And so um, what I hear you saying, Lenita, is that we need to think about what the criteria is for naming and how we, um, how we might um, consider prioritizing Rosewood residents. And so we will definitely take that, take that feedback. Thank you for that. Did I, did I miss anything there? Okay, thank you. No, ma'am, that's, that's, that's what I was looking uh, 
that's where I'm going with that. Okay. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you so much. Yeah. Um, and Sharonda, if, if I can just expand on that, um, I, I completely agree with Lanita. We want to highlight those local heroes that um, came from uh, the Rosewood community. Um, I would love to find a way to um, prioritize, if we can, those that actually um, called Rosewood Courts home at some point in their lives, and they uh, went on to be, uh, you know, a local entrepreneur or a doctor, a nurse, uh, an educator. Um, you know, a, a pillar of their community. I would love to find a way to, um, you know, bring bring their their name to life in a way through naming opportunities, whether it's for the green space, whether it's you know within the welcome center, whether it's you know other markers within the community within the uh, the, the Rosewood uh, property itself. So um, I I would say it would be important for us to find ways to truly bring um, those, those unsung heroes um, to the forefront in some way. Now, how we go about finding those names and, and those, um, you know, their stories, that's where we're going to need some help. Um, again, either through some academic partners or Carver or Six Square, but yes, um, Lenita, I, I completely agree that we, we do want them to be those local hometown heroes. Um, I know that obviously we have prominent national figures such as Booker T. Washington and, and, and others, but we really want this to have more of a, a, a local um, community prominence. Uh, so that's where I would love to, yes, kind of flesh out what, what is that criteria going to be? And, and hopefully at the top of that list is um, individuals who called Rosewood Courts home at some point in their lives. Thank you, thank you, Sylvia. And so we really do appreciate you all um, jumping into this conversation. I'm gonna highlight a couple of the comments that are in the chat right now. Um, Barbara Jackson says names of historic Rosewood area community events. For example, the Rosewood Ladies Garden Club. Thank you, Barbara. And then uh, Miss Moore says that she's a lifelong Austinite who lived on San Bernard and she'd like to see the names of black community members who made an impact in the Rosewood area. Um, she su suggests Velma Overton, Ada Simon, John Q. Taylor, Dory Miller, um, F.R. Rice, Marvin Griffin, Elsie Anderson, Lee Lewis Campbell, Cecil Moore and similar residents that were influential in the neighborhood. Thank you, Ms. Moore, for that. And then Steve uh, Wichard asked the question, is there a way to find out the names of the original people who purchased land for Emancipation Park? And I do think we have some of that information. I, I know I've seen an article or a picture with the, uh, is it EJ White? Um, that, so I think that we can come across that information. And then Marcy Puente says, how about incorporating the original owners of the land who established Emancipation Park? There it is, Thomas and Maddie White. So there's some agreement there. And Justin Stewart weighs in, beyond actual Rosewood residents, you could consider exploring some of the African-American philanthropists who were buried at Oakwood Cemetery, just upstream Paquito Creek, which Rosewood is built on top of. The city of Austin has an onsite historian at Oakwood Cemetery named Jennifer Chenoweth, who could give you an applicable list. Um, so these are really great ideas and we appreciate the opportunity to brainstorm with you. Um, and then um, Ross Shakir says maybe something inspirational or aspirational, the Hope Center, the Rosewood Legacy Center. So this is all good good food for thought, if you will, good ideas, um, direction, um, insight for the project team as we consider um, how to move forward the redevelopment and really highlight the uniqueness and the, the specialness of the, the site itself and the project itself and, and um, tell the story. 
So great ideas, great feedback, everyone on that. Um, I'll leave it. I know some of you may still be thinking. Um, so I'll just leave it open for about another 30 seconds and then we'll move on to the next, uh, next aspect of tonight's agenda, which I believe is next steps. Any final thoughts, questions, ideas? All right. So in terms of next steps, I'm going to turn it over to uh, Sylvia Blanca with Haka to close us out for this evening and let us know if, uh, what the next steps are. I'm checking my chat one last time. Oh, Sylvia says great ideas, feedback. Thank you. All right. I'll turn it over to Sylvia. Um, next steps. This is this meeting closes out the um, official phase in terms of community input for this phase of the work, um, this part of the, the work in terms of the workshops for the Welcome Center and the Visitor Center, but we do want to continue to hear from you um, and engage with you um, throughout the life of this project. So Sylvia. Thank you, Sharonda. Yes, ab absolutely. Um, while this is the third of a series of three community workshops, uh, that doesn't mean that our work is done. <laughs> On the contrary, <laughs> the work is just beginning. And so we, we definitely want to continue to hear from you. And there is a website that is dedicated to um, this wonderful project. And you see that on the screen here, which is uh, hakanet.org slash Rosewood Courts. And this will be the uh, spot that will uh, contain updated information as we continue this great work and is also um, a location where you can continue to provide your, your comments and, um, and add any questions that you may have. Uh, so we will uh, be looking to update this, this uh, webpage with all of the latest and greatest. Uh, so please stay tuned and um, you know click click on this on this web page um, on on a regular basis to to get updated on on what we're doing next. Uh, but to Sharonda's point, we we definitely want to continue to um, work with with you all with with the community on sort of what what the next steps are in terms of the green space because again as we have uh, received your feedback, we will also be continuing to get the feedback of our Rosewood families. And um, we had a great opportunity to do that on June 17th. And we will be continuing to have more in-person events, uh, which we're super excited about. Um, we might do it in air conditioning next time though, <laughs> one of the community rooms, uh, make it a little more comfortable for folks. But um, yes, this, this is really a work in progress and uh, we're, we're looking forward to just keeping you all up to speed on, on what we're doing next and um, some of the designs as we flesh them out a little bit more. In terms of um, the uh, actual closing of transactions and you know, the actual financing of this project, we're looking at probably spring of next year where we will uh, be finalizing all of the financing and then the relocation for residents will be underway uh, right around that time, spring, summertime of next year. And so, um, you know, this is really, really exciting to start to see a lot of this actually come to life and come to fruition. And, and I know I'm preaching to the choir with Steve here. You know, you've you've been through this, you know, since day one. Uh, so thank you, Steve, and and you know, for the rest of, of your neighbors who have hung in there, been patient, and have been you know excitedly awaiting uh, these these next steps to to get get the balls in, in into motion. And so um, we will we will be staying in touch through the website and. Again, if there are any questions or if you have any feedback that you would like to share, 
please don't hesitate to um, submit a comment. There will there is a way to do that on on this web page, and uh, we look forward to bringing the community together for hopefully a uh, groundbreaking this time next year. Right. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sylvia. Um, we appreciate your leadership um, on the project. And thank you to everyone who um, joined us this evening. We really do um, appreciate and are grateful for your comments, your feedback. This is helping the design team do the work that they, um, they need to do, that they love to do to, to support the development of the project. All right, well, I will return you to your evening. Um, and for those of you who are watching afterwards, thanks for joining us. Um, have a great evening. Have a happy 4th of July. Thank you, everyone. Good night. Thank you. Thank you. Good night, everyone. <laughs>